welcome to the 96 leadership leaders lecture on a very interesting topic growth strategies and growing businesses uh, for growing businesses and uh, we have uh, anupama pridarshini who is a svp uh, at ondc and she takes care of corporate governance and other areas and let me have the pleasure of introducing her formally to all of you before we hand over the platform to her she comes with a very illustrious uh, 25 plus years of experience and uh, with uh, three major companies, one is Tata Steel, where she worked for uh, nine years as a senior manager of strategy and planning, after which she was with uh, Pepsi, PepsiCo, general manager and planning for two years and two months. And uh, just uh, before uh, her current assignment, the longest assignment was with uh, the iconic IKEA Com group, uh, where she was CFO on business navigation, purchasing logistics from Southeast, Southeast Asia, and also director IKEA Services Private Limited. And there she was uh, with this company for uh, 13 years and nine months, a very long uh, career. And uh, she's, if you see her uh, profile, she has taken care of uh, a lot of things, most importantly being uh, leading a 6,000 crore global purchase from South Asia and new business volume added a a approximately 1,000 crores uh, each year at an average for uh, last uh, you know, three years. And overall growth at one, 40 plus in the index during the pandemic and uh, that's uh, her uh, you know business uh, credentials and also uh, uh, like i said currently she's uh, with uh, ondc which is uh, i think uh, people are saying that will this be like a upi movement for uh, e-commerce right so that's an open network for digital commerce where she's senior vice president corporate governance risk and compliance and investor relations uh, from uh, september 2023 onwards and she also one of the most sought after speaker, as well as the most sought after visiting faculty in some of the finest institutions in the country, including uh, uh, Irma, MDA Gurgaon, Exam University. And uh, you know, uh, uh, along with this, I think uh, she, like you said, uh, you know, she's a senior business leader and part of the management team at the supply chain organization in South Asia between 2009 and 2023, delivering to a responsible and sustainable purchasing from this region to all IKEA stores and markets globally and increasing the share of uh, local sourcing in India, India retail with affordable and functional products. And uh, by itself, that by itself is a huge task. You know, if you're talking about sustainable sourcing, I mean, the word sustainability has a lot of uh, business implications. I'm sure she might uh, share some of it with us. And she also was leading uh, business navigation, business plan, business performance, and controlling budget, finance, accounts, legal, digital workplace, office administration. So, uh, and the list goes on. So, as you can imagine, uh, like I said in the beginning, she comes with the, uh, 25 years plus, uh, you know, uh, illustrious experience, and she's going to take us through very interesting topic on uh, the, uh, how do you grow businesses. And uh, uh, since all of your business leaders yourself, you will have like a, have written in the chat box very many uh, actionable insights not necessarily for the you know startups startups will have a different growth agendas even for the uh, you know, uh, uh, established firms you will have it and most importantly i think some of it can also be used for our own personal thing because all of us seek growth at a very personal level right so therefore some of these actionable insights can be applied at some level maybe with some tweaks at our uh, individual level also Thank you so much, Anupapa. And uh, like I said, I'm extremely sorry to disturb you in the evening, but absolute pleasure to have you, uh, especially for this wonderful topic. And I'm sure with your uh, illustrious career, we are, like I said, we will all have great actionable insights. Over to you, Anupama. And let me share the screen for you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chaudhary. I'm humbled by this introduction. Uh, it's been a fantastic journey of 25 years. But this journey, I have not done it alone. I have done it with many, many colleagues, co-workers and my family and friends. Because each pillar is very important to keep you going. Uh, you know, this 25 years is not like a sprint race. It has been like a marathon. There have been ups and downs, but you just keep going forward without really giving up at any point in time. So uh, briefly, I would like to introduce myself more than what uh, Mr. Chaudhary just introduced me. And here is a picture of me taken at IKEA last year in, an, in the new office that we opened at Bangalore. And why I'm sharing this picture here is also to draw attention that what is important for any organization to grow. For any organization to grow, the most important thing is to connect. 
and also to retain its own individuality. So this is a wall of the IKEA office in Bangalore where you see Dala Horse. And Dala Horse is a very typical Swedish traditional carved horse. Uh, but when it is painted in India, it is not like one single color horse like it usually is in Sweden. But it has been painted in multiple colors uh, showing the diversity that India brings on the platform, the vibrancy, the colors of India. So it is when IKEA came to India, it wanted to make its office here. So how can it connect with the people locally also was very important. And that can be seen also in the store where the products are there from global range also. And there's a separate section uh, in each of uh, the parts of the store with a local offering. So how do you marry and connect with people, with the local people or with your own employees is very important. So this talks very highly of the values and culture. So any growing organization has to be very high in terms of its values. That is what I believe. And all the organizations that I have worked with, be it Tata, PepsiCo, IKEA, ONDC, one thing which has been very common is the thread of values. All these organizations have been purpose-driven, wanting to make a difference at the ground level for the many people of the country. Tata's are nation builders. I don't need to say any more. Uh, I have been very lucky to start my corporate career with Tata and in the heart of uh, uh, Jamshedpur, where uh, the Tatas uh, started uh, their steel plant and their uh, motor vehicles plant before going to Pune and other parts of the country. So that is where the Tatas really started growing their business in Jamshedpur. So being there, feeling the culture, the values on the ground. And when I started working for Tata Steel at that point in time, it was a very small steel player only in Jamshedpur. Now I can say small, but at that point in time, it was looked upon like this uh, as one of the biggest steel players. And it still today is. So how did it grow from that one small, uh, one place steel uh, uh, producer to a steel giant? So... I have been part of that journey and I will share a few anecdotes how Tata Steel took its growth journey. PepsiCo, I was responsible for all capital investments that happen in India. It was a very brief stint, but very impactful. Uh, my biggest take from PepsiCo has been uh, how can you move like this? You know, like everything should have been done yesterday and it is to be done today. We talk about agility now. People did not talk about this word agility when I was working at PepsiCo, but I could see that happening in action. I joined IKEA, uh, was there for 14 years, had an IKEA store opened at that point in time, uh, 14 years back. Then what we were producing in India would contribute to only 2% of the store sales. It was huge, but it was mostly textiles. But there are many things which are sold in an IKEA store, from spoons to furniture. So slowly over these years, we built a lot of businesses in India for sustainable sourcing across the world. So increasing the local sourcing share for India stores from 2% to close to 30% and also in the process increasing the global sourcing. Then ONDC came along. Uh, I've been here only for a little more than three months very new to the organization, but then the organization is also very new. Uh, in 2023, there were less than 1,000 transactions in January last year. And when we closed December, there were more than 55 lakh transactions on ONDC network. So in one year, it has grown from less than 1,000 transactions to more than 55 lakh transactions in a month. Huge growth. And all these organizations have been wanting to make a difference at the ground in the lives of the many people around them. So how do they do it and how they have been growing? Can we go to the next slide? Yes. This is something that I connect with uh, very strongly because to grow any organization, 
you need many hands many hearts and many minds one person cannot create giant organizations and growing businesses and it is very important to get everyone with their heart and mind both into it you cannot just make organizations for future only with your mind you really need your heart and soul into it to make things happen bachpan mein bolte the agar dil nahi lagao to kaam nahi banega so similarly in the businesses also it is very important to have it there and here is a quote from ingvar kamprad he is no more but i have had the pleasure of seeing him meeting him he would come and meet and connect with each and every employee of the organization be one amongst them and also be on the store floor trying to understand the customers what the customer wants and this is what fueled ikea's growth so connecting with many people having the same message across in so many countries ikea is present across more than 80 countries in the world with more than 550 stores but most of the stores look identical how does this happen when a product is made the same product is being made in india maybe in poland maybe in china but you pick it up it is all the same made in the same conditions having the same chemical compositions how is it possible so that is made possible because there has been a connect across countries across people with the same common vision and we'll get to know more about it if we can go to the next one what do you see here must be looking strange in a corporate presentation where we are talking about growing organization what is this alice doing in her wonderland here this is what usually happens to companies which start just thinking of growing so i remember during the early years in tata steel when i was working in the strategy group we were working on how to make tata steel grow so we were a small team of people five of us we made some fantastic presentations on how tata steel should grow it should do this in africa this in europe and this in southeast asia and this is uh, what we will do in india and this is how we will grow and we will become big huge plants and when we shared this with our seniors there was pin drop silence and you know what feedback we got you are all over the place you are going shopping for lollies this is looking good pick it up this is looking good pick it up there is absolutely no coherent strategy and what should that be strategy should be simple so simple that anyone in the organization should be able to understand it maybe you are doing the same things but you cannot go like all over the place so how do we do that we were given the task of just putting everything on one a4 paper your entire strategy has to come here if you are able to communicate this then you are done and i remember that there was one from and one to so from here to here how do you grow just one a4 it was shared with the senior most management of the tata group and then the management said we are with you go ahead with your plans and then we started working on the many acquisitions in southeast asia joint ventures with tata blue scope etc nat steel was acquired uh chorus acquisition happened greenfield started in uh, odisha chatisgarh so then the company started growing so how did that how did that happen because everyone got the same messaging that we are here we want to grow here simple to understand and we will do this 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 so it was doing a lot of things but doing it together with the same messaging so communication is very important because you're not building organizations for growth with just a few people there are many many people involved and how do all cogs of the wheel move in the same direction 
because generally what happens is that someone may move in this direction someone may move in that direction someone here everyone is moving there's a lot of movement but then you are just pulling each other in different directions so to keep everyone going and growing in the same direction is one very important lesson for a growing organization if we go to the next how ikea does it is fika you know fika is how uh, sweets call coffee break and uh, this is ikea office in bangalore uh, it looks like a store but this is inside the office and you have a space for fika in all ikea offices across the world where employees come together we call them co-workers because we are all working together and they discuss over coffee how would they want ikea to grow and what is important what is not important so people come together then they go to work come together go to work so there are points where you come collaborate and work come collaborate and work so collaboration is very important and different companies find different ways to collaborate some do town halls there are town halls uh, where the managing directors of the organizations speak to the entire organization once a month or once a week where anyone is free to ask questions and that is how they connect with the last mile in the organization to communicate the message of how do they want to grow the particular organization and different things work for different people but it is about communication and it is about people then only growth happens if we go to the next one no i think we missed something in between no okay so before we go to this one uh, i just wanted to share something that to make this communication happen it is also very important to continue to celebrate people who are making this growth happen and to celebrate those milestones to acknowledge people's contributions so while you do these communications it is also important to keep the organization engaged on the progress of the organization if your vision is to move from here to here each milestone has to be celebrated and recognized and shared that gives the organization the momentum to move forward and as we move forward there are also a lot of communication that happens within the organization which is not in a structured manner but more how do people talk about growth and growth strategies within the organization how to build that connection of heart and mind this picture uh, reminds me of my early days at pepsico i had just joined and i had moved from jamshedpur to gurgaon delhi it was summer months very hot and suddenly we see clouds coming in the sky and you cannot imagine my joy in the heat of delhi when you see uh, clouds all over the sky you just feel like dancing with joy believe me but i see everyone around me ah oh, clouds ah oh, clouds and i'm like uh, are you worried because of the traffic jams no 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 it is about growth our sales for today tomorrow may get impacted because of the rain so this is what keeps going all the time in the minds of people when the communication is so strong that you have to grow so each one takes it upon herself or himself to grow the organization and everything and anything that happens around them they link it with the growth of the organization so that is the kind of connect which has to be established if we go to the next one and what do we see here we see soda banta bottles you will see it on the streets of india all over and when i joined pepsi uh, my manager asked me so who do you think is the competitor of pepsi i would say coke mm -hmm. anything and everything which you drink is pepsi's competition be it water be it soda banta and during my tenure at pepsi nimbus was launched 
and i could see that nimbu and the soda combination of the streets coming in packaged bottle which then became handy for a lot of more people so the ability to relate to what is required by the market how you define your market is very important and that is what helps organizations to grow to the next level if we go to the next yes this was behind and this i wanted uh, it to be in front but uh, sorry for having it later uh, nelson mandela said it very nicely remember to celebrate milestones as you prepare for the road ahead because if you don't let your people know how you are progressing then you lose them along the way so these constant connects are very important to continue to growing any organization and as we are talking of connects we have been talking about values uh, i put this from tara steel uh, that point in time uh, i was i used to be very touched when i would see on the airports and uh, at other places where tata steel would have some banners like value stronger than steel so steel is already so strong but there is something which is more strong which holds the entire organization together which is values or for that matter we also make steel so you're growing a nation you're building a nation and you're also making steel or we also make tomorrow so lots of things because the tatas have been nation builders and this steel plant nobody could think of a steel plant with so much of greenery and a lake and uh, impeccable cleanliness across the plant huge even in that huge area all safety standards maintained uh, zero uh, tolerance would mean zero tolerance so when you have a foundation uh, that strong um i am lucky that i started working with tata steel then it remains with you all throughout so zero tolerance to something which is uh, unethical still remains at the center of everything that we do we go to the next in a free enterprise the community is not just another stakeholder in business but is in fact the very purpose of its existence jamshed ji tata said this long long back and this is what connected a lot of people to working for tatas and still today tata is a very strong brand growing even stronger and for this i have one picture on the next slide this is from the road which was next to our house when we used to stay in jamshedpur and there would be clean roads and trees that would grow and trees that would grow without being hindered by poles and wires with underground wiring and cabling happening long long back so trees that were planted many years before we were even born to make that city grow so if we go to the next one you will see that uh, this was a way to connect with the people of the organization this was a way to connect with what you were building for the nation as an example of leading with values so you can see the trees growing on the sides which today people are making an effort to make it happen we go to the next and uh we were talking about communication we were talking of getting people together and very important thing is to re retain who you are during this growth so simplicity is a value at ikea and this simplicity helps ikea grow it is reflected in how people work it's a very non bureaucratic flat organization it is reflected in its products which are very simple functional basic products and it is reflected in how the stores function or the organization at large functions working on very 
clear, simple, um, basic ideas. There is nothing complex. So the more simple it is, it enables growth better. We go to the next one. And what drives the people to make this growth happen is the vision of the organization to create a better everyday life for the many people. Because when you have a vision which is powerful, which connects with the people of the organization, which can get percolated to the way the organization functions, then you have the entire engine moving in the same direction. If we go to the next one. So how do you make this vision possible at the ground level? So I was working for the purchasing and logistics organization for IKEA based out of South Asia in Delhi Gurgaon, but uh, working across this region. And this is a developing region where we have people and factories which are not at the same level as many global factories. But IKEA buys from here, creating the same conditions that would be for a factory in Poland or Germany or anywhere else in the world. So lifting the standards from where it is to where it should be and then creating a better everyday life, not just for the end customers who are purchasing IKEA products at the lowest price, of functional products, but also where it is being made. How is it making a difference in the life of those people was also equally important. And when you work for organizations like these, what happens is that all these suppliers who were supplying for IKEA, they also start putting a different uh, energy into the system because they think that this is how they are also driving change in the society. So simple things, uh, IKEA has its checklist on which is called as IKEA way of working, uh, where the health insurance of workers or uh, punch in, punch out or uh, payment of overtime, fire exits. How many factories are able to ensure that it is there in a good way? And any default in it, IKEA then starts taking actions. So there are audits that happens from time to time to ensure that these workers are working in the same conditions as the goods are being produced anywhere else in the world. So then you're actually impacting the lives of the many people. And when suppliers get to see this, initially they are hesitant. They think it's an additional cost. But then they start realizing that it is not an extra cost, but it is motivating many more people to put in a lot more and to make the growth happen. We go to the next one. Here you see a person who is doing dishes. This is an IKEA store where you also sell IKEA food. And who is this man? If we go to the next one, he is this IKEA global CEO who is doing the dishes. And every year he makes sure that he does this for a couple of days at the store. Work doing different things at the store and so do all employees. Being closer to the customer to understand what the customer needs and that is what fuels the growth of an organization. If you don't understand what the customer needs, then you certainly cannot fuel the growth of an organization. So important to connect with the employees, to get diverse perspectives, build them into your plan and be flexible with that plan to uh, incorporate those small tactics because your overall vision direction is clear but small little things here and there is what makes your plan grow along the way and make it even more solid because you're not able to envisage and see everything when you start the journey but these connects with your employees with your customers helps you look at those little things which you may miss when you're looking just at the bigger picture in front, incorporate those things along the way and keep moving forward in the right direction. Go to the next one. And this is what we would do at Pepsi also. I remember sitting uh, 
on a truck like this, which you see on the right in the front seat along with the driver, and grow and go around South City too from one Kirana store to the next Kirana store, uh, taking a note of what was sold yesterday or the week before, what is it that is being sold, how is the visibility in the store of our products, how it should be, and what is it that is being asked for stock filling. I did not work in sales. I did not work in marketing. But I also did it and every single person did it there. So it is always about what the customer wants. You go to the next. And how IKEA uh, links it with the customer and with the purpose of the organization is any product that it designs has five things. So it should have a good form. It should look good. Otherwise, I will not have it for my home. It should have a function because I'm a very simple company. So any product that I make should be functional. It should not just be like anything. Of good quality. Of low price because I want to make products which are for the many people, for the people with thin wallets. And it should be made in sustainable conditions. And for and also of sustainable products as much as possible. And now the company has been working on reusing its own uniforms and making products out of it. So there are multiple projects which are going around the organization. Um, one such example I have taken of uh, the uniforms. So the IKEA uniforms, you will see yellow and gray. So those uniforms are then recycled and then products are being made out of it. So a lot of things are being done. How do people and different organizations connect with their customers, with their employees towards building an organization of the future is very important because future is all about sustainability. There will be fewer resources and how we use those resources is very important. We go to the next one. It is always about finding that balance between the heart and the mind to grow any organization. We have heard a lot of anecdotes and it's all about the heart and the mind in all the stories that I've shared so far. And uh, this heart and mind story continues even when um, last week it was when uh, Prime Minister Modi was in Jaipur along with Mac, uh, the French uh, president. If you go to the next one, having tea, on the by lanes of uh, the low, uh, the road in front of Hawa Mahal. Here they were connecting, trying to connect with the heart, having ch chai in Kullar. But also, Mr. Modi is thinking with his mind what he wants to showcase. And there comes the Bhim UPI app, where through which the payment was made for this chai. So what went viral? was the heart and the mind both. The chai and how the payment was being made at every corner and street of this country. So digital public infrastructure, that is the space where I work now with ONDC. And it is the space which has grown many times in the last years. Uh, alone uh, between pre-COVID and post-COVID, UPI has grown three times and now it is there in every nook and corner of every part of the country where even the sabzi wala uh, can take your payment through um, Paytm or phone pay or whatever. And another part of this digital infrastructure is how we are going to make digital commerce happen. So what is happening today is that a lot of people across the country, some 80, 85 crore people, have access to internet, of which digital payments happening is 30 to 35 crores, which includes, um, uh, when I say crores, that means number of transactions that are happening. And most of it are bills and ticketing. But even though we hear so much about Amazon and Zomato, Still, we are very, very small when it comes to digital commerce, which is happening. Digital commerce that is happening 
is only 6 to 7 percent of total retail transactions. Whereas in countries like China, it is 25 to 30 percent. In US, it is 15 to 20 percent. So there is huge scope in India for growing digital commerce. We are still at the tip. And there is space for everyone. There's space for everyone to grow. And ONDC is one of its kind. It's a network. It's not a platform. And what is a platform and what is a network? I will try to explain in the following slides. But what ONDC will enable? ONDC will enable, like you see on the left, the total Kirana stores in India. There are 12 million Kirana stores in India. But only 0.125% of them are e-commerce enabled. So you can see what is the magnitude uh, of impact that ONDC or any other e-commerce organization can create by going to the lowest level of the organization. Or for MSMEs, there are some 9 to 10 crore MSMEs in this country. But only 5 to 6% of them are doing digital transactions. So how can we get more of the many on board it? There are farmer producer organizations. So if you want to buy export quality mangoes in summer, how do you get them? If you want strawberries, how do you get them directly from the farmers, the mandis? So ONDC is trying to create exactly that kind of an e-commerce network with its roots deep inside the country. If we go to the next one. Uh, today, what happens is that uh, as a seller, uh, a seller who comes on any platform, today there are many platforms in this country. There are Amazons, Olas, Magic Pin, Snapdeal, Flipkart, Zomato, Swiggy, and etc., etc., etc. So whichever seller comes onto any platform, they have limit, limited choices in terms of they are only privy to those customers who come on that particular platform. They have to abide by the terms and conditions of that particular platform. They cannot have their own terms and conditions. And discoverability becomes an issue for those sellers and buyers because we have heard about the white labeling. That is very a very prevalent practice on many platforms. And maybe I am a uh, small uh, manufacturer who can manufacture a particular product, but I don't have the logistics or I don't have the uh, capability to find buyers for myself. And that is why I'm going to these multiple platforms. And for different platforms, I have to register myself so many number of times. So what is happening is in the process, I feel harassed as a small manufacturer, as an MSME player, who is then logging on to different platforms to reach more number of buyers. And I, as a buyer, I may have one, two, three, maximum, say, five apps on my phone. And for everything, I may go for to different apps to look for different products. Or maybe the same product, I may go and log on to different apps to see if it is being sold here and at what price, if it is sold on the next app and at what price. So how do I make life easier for both the buyer and the seller is what ONDC is trying to do. And not just make it easy, but also to create a network which is trusted, which is secure for these transactions to happen. We go to the next one. So ONDC revolves around unbundling and interoperability. So what happens is that if uh, there are people who are producing a thing, then there are logistic service providers who are carrying things. And then there are buyers who are buying things. So there's a buyer app here to which we as customers log in. There's a seller app here to which the sellers log into. And then there are 
people who take care of the logistics in between. So today, if I log on to any platform as a customer, I can see only those sellers which are connected with that platform. But those people who come on to ONDC, the, there are many platforms which are now there on ONDC. So I, as a customer, any buyer app, I log on to ONDC through that buyer app. I can see all the sellers of all the seller apps. And the seller on the other end, when the seller logs on to ONDC platform, they can see all the buyers of all the buyer apps. So what is happening? It is increasing visibility. It is increasing the base for both the buyers to choose from and the sellers to sell to. And everyone is doing what they are best at. So the seller is doing what they are best at, manufacturing. The buyer app is doing what they are best at, getting the target customers. And then the delivery is being taken care in between by a third party. So, so many times the seller app may have the delivery option themselves. But here the customer also has the choice to say, okay, I don't want to take it through your delivery partner, but I can see another delivery partner on the network who can um, get this particular good delivered to me X rupees cheaper. So why not do that? So what you're doing in the process, you're unbundling it. So seller is someone else, the logistics provider is someone else, and the buyer is someone else. Logistics here is very, very key because today 20% of the GDP goes into logistics cost of which 60% is the last mile delivery cost. And when there is a network where there are many buyer apps and the customers concentrated in a region, then there is a chance for all these delivery service providers to get things together for those last mile deliveries and to improve the economy as the whole in terms of logistics cost. We go to the next one. What I have been talking about, we will see it in a couple of slides on how it is happening. So today what is happening that there's a platform one, you are searching for a product, you build a cart, you go through a payment gateway and etc. etc. and then your order gets delivered. Then you go to the second platform to do the same thing. What ONDC is trying to do, we go to the next one, is it is trying to link different platforms across which is there on the network to increase maximum benefit for both the seller, the logistic service provider, and also the buyer. So it is making better life for each one, increasing the horizon. So the next one. With ONDC, all buyers, sellers, and logistics can interact with each other. So you need to register only once. In any one buyer app, you can see all sellers on the network. Any one seller app, you have access to all buyers and logistics service providers on the network. So this is something which is very unique in nature. It is being done for the first time in the world. There are a lot of people across the world, many different institutions, which have reached out to the government that uh, they would want to uh, replicate this in their part of the uh, world. They are following it closely. Uh, and there's a lot uh, of uh, uh, things to uh, people have to learn about, not just UPI, but also about how digital commerce is happening across the world. And what it will ultimately lead to is uh, since you are providing so many options for both the sellers and the buyers, monopolies of a few platforms will reduce. When that reduces, life will become better for sellers. Uh, so they are not being dictated by the commissions being charged by a few platforms. But then the market is able to regulate what is the right price for these sellers to be on different platforms because the sellers have so much visibility to so many buyers. We go to the next one. I think it's the same thing, but uh, 
little more in detail, but we can skip this. We can go ahead. I've been talking about all of this. The logistics also is providing everything. So this is the simple story in picture. ONDC is a network. You cannot find ONDC as an app, but it is connecting different buyer apps and seller apps and logistic seller apps all together to help everyone connect with everyone else. Go to the next one. There are many, many uh, buyers and sellers already today. There are 2.8 lakh sellers on the uh, network. There are more than 1.4 crores SKUs on the network today. There are a lot of uh, uh, buyer apps and seller apps and logistic uh, prov service providers already on the network. And this will only grow. Go to the next one. And then, um, so what makes these organizations grow? These paths that these organizations take are unique. They are unchartered paths. Not many would have taken these paths before them. So how do they continue to move forward trying to find answers? It is done by a visionary or a group of visionaries who come together with a vision that this is the direction in which we have to go. There are storms, there are failures, there are successes. Not every day is rosy when you're on this journey. But the courage to continue is what comes. And that is what separates the winners from the failures. There are many who give up and there are many who continue. So when these organizations continue, it is they continue not just from the leaders, but also different people from the organization are also contributing and moving in the same direction to making things happen in these organizations. We go to the next one. So when you are doing this, you don't have all the answers. You know you are moving in a particular direction. You have bigger milestones carved, but the smaller details is what you discover in the process. When you take a step, you see two steps ahead. When you take that step, so it is just like the torch light, you know, when you shine a torch in the tunnel, the immediate uh, distance in front of you, the road in front of you is more clear, but the road in front is still very hazy. So as you take steps, you will see what is ahead of you. And sometimes you need to do things differently to take those smaller steps moving in that direction. Go to the next one. And most important thing, when you're moving in these directions, there will be mistakes. So how do leaders let their teams make mistakes is very important. And IKEA was one organization I worked with, with in, which encouraged people to make mistakes. As long as they were not repeating it. So... Encouraging people to make mistakes has what is what uh, has put IKEA on the growth path. Not everything has been right. People are free to experiment. People are free to take decisions. People are free to take those calls. Not everything has to be aligned with everyone. It is a lot about entrepreneurship. So there are many small entrepreneurs within the organization who take their own decisions, who try making things. Some succeed, some fail, but all those decisions are binded together by the same value of creating a better everyday life for the many people with the same guiding principle of making products which are low in price, which have form, which are functional, which are sustainable. So all those basics are being taken care of. That is there at the back of the mind. So individually, people are free and that is how innovation happens. 
you are not restricting people, but you're providing them the common direction in which they have to move, plus giving them the freedom to work on their own, to be entrepreneurs for what they do every day. And it is not just in the products, but even in the services. So each function, be it the finance function, the people function, everyone is innovating in their own right, trying to create the same magic of whatever they are doing to simplify things, to have better things in place, to have things which will cost less in place. So that direction is there. Go to the next one. And here is how I want to conclude is that it takes many hands, many hearts and many minds to grow any organization. Thank you, Dr. Nagin, and thank you to all the listeners here today. Thank you very much for being patient with me. Thank you so much, uh, Anupam. My absolute pleasure. I think mean, a lot of insights, I would say. I mean, I'm sure the, all the participants would say that. With your permission, can we begin a Q&A session? I think we are just left with a few minutes. Uh, is that okay with you? Yes, yes, sure. Great. Uh, this is a, a question from Mr. Saikat Mukhabadjai. His question is, how can we ensure diverse perspectives are effectively incorporated into the strategy while maintaining a managerial uh, manageable perf uh, timeline for implementation. Thank you, Saikat. So, uh, Saikat, uh, I have shared a couple of things. One is that when you have a strategy, you have a longer vision in one direction. And then you have smaller milestones in between and also smaller projects in between. So each project is like an entrepreneurship project where the team is leading, taking decisions and making things happen. And very important to come together and celebrate those milestones so that we know that we are moving in the right direction under the right time of implementation. Great. Now, uh, I think before I get to the uh, no, another question, uh, I just want to ask you, um, I think uh, you know, uh, we are talking about growth strategies and then you've explained very eloquently you know, all of your uh, lessons, you know, four companies, including ONDC, how it is, uh, each one of them have grown. And the basic question uh, uh, that we would like to ask you, uh, Anupama, is that how do you define growth? Is it from the point of view of top line? Is it from the point of view of uh, you know, the bottom line, you know, your... Uh, uh, EBITAs and then you know, pads and things like that. Or like some people say, it is not about top line or bottom line, but it's actually a lifeline that is a customers. Because um, there are companies which actually compute what is called as a profitable customer. You can have a number of customers, but then um, and, uh, not all of them are contributing equally or uh, not at all contributing to the, the kitty there. So from your perspective, how do you define the word growth? Is it in terms of just, an, uh, you know, uh, for example, for retail store, like right? you're talking about IKEA. Now, IKEA store um, itself, you know, it has taken almost about, I think, uh, eight, nine years to establish the first store in Hyderabad in 2018, if I'm July kind of thing. But then before that, I think uh, it has spent a humongous amount of money and the time, resources to establish the first store. And everybody was definitely asking, why not India? Why not India kind of thing? But the point is that even after almost about now, what, I think about six years, it is having just about five stores as of, uh, I think, uh, maybe last week kind of thing. Now, the point is that you look at uh, similar kind of, uh, you know, the MNCs, right? Uh, for example, maybe Starbucks or Inditex, your Zara's of the world. Now, each one of them have grown in their own way. But then if you look at very objectively, you know, take a backseat and look at it from different lens, maybe you will have a different take on each one of their growth. So how do you, from your perspective, define the word growth? Is it in terms of the top line or the bottom line or, you know, like we said, a lifeline kind of thing or anything else that you have it in mind? To kind of, um... Thank you for that interesting question. Uh, I did not have those uh, theoretical mean, uh, you know, what growth means on my slides since I had strict instructions from Nandita that you have to make it more like a story <laughs> than a textbook. But uh, let me take a moment first to describe what growth is in businesses and why businesses necessarily exist. So growth is for me, what I understand growth is to create widen the gap uh, between the revenue and the cost to create value. So yeah. when you are creating value, is when you are creating growth. So you continue to reduce cost and you continue to increase your top line. And that is how you're creating value for the business. But how do you make it sustainable that it continues to grow like this while your cost continues to go down like this? Yeah. 
Right. This happens when you have a longer term vision, a more sustainable vision. And that is where uh, organizations like Tata, where they are doing nation building, where they are able to create value, not just for the organization, but to create value for the community. So then they are expanding their customer base by creating a brand equity. Or companies like IKEA, which wanted to enter India and could have entered India as a franchisee maybe 20 years back. But they decided not to enter then because they want this is the last biggest market that IKEA can enter into after having entered 80 countries. IKEA exists as franchisees in smaller countries like Hong Kong, Singapore, etc., where there are few stores. But in a country like India, where the company wants to make it big, it did not want to enter small. It wanted to enter big. And India is a very different country where the customers behave very differently. And it wanted to understand what is the right way to enter this country. And the stores that have started in India are in a different format. If you look at Bangalore, Hyderabad, uh, one store uh, in uh, what uh, Thane. Thane is... Nabi Mumbai. Yes, Navi Mumbai, which are the bigger ones, the bigger formats. Yeah. And then you have the smaller format stores in Mumbai. And the ones that are coming in Gurgaon and Noida are coming in a city center format, where there would be many other stores and also an IKEA store. So it is still experimenting, trying to understand what the Indian customer wants without losing what IKEA stands for. So it is slightly slower. Uh, not as fast as the other brands, but when it comes, it comes big. In Hyderabad, when it made its first store, Indians live by their stomach. So it has the largest restaurant with 1100 seating space. So then you are trying to merge what is the need of the local community, the customer, and what the organization stands for to create an everlasting sustainable growth. Thank you so much. I, I think uh, your definition of growth is very interesting. Uh, I must say that. And I have the last question for you before we wind up. I think uh, yesterday also, I think in the McKinsey CEO, you know, Bob Stenfels, he said that it is not India's decade, but India's uh, century, where you know the, some of the best companies in the world uh, are queuing up India and the uh, institutions also are queuing up India. And there are a lot of ways in which, uh, like you rightly said, you know, the whole of the world is looking at uh, now, the learning uh, uh, from this ONDs experiment. And then uh, uh, Triple IT in Bangalore actually has uh, been a consultant and uh, designed and delivered the solutions uh, equivalent to other kind of solution for many countries, including Lagos and, uh, Lagos and other countries. So there, a lot of things are happening in that front. But I think the anticlimax question to you would be, I think in the last few years, uh, Anupama, you know, what we have seen is that, you know, when uh, Harley Davidson came to Hyderabad, we celebrated. It's the first store opened in Hyderabad. But in no time, it had to fold its operation and you know, go back uh, to where it came from. And then we have also seen uh, General Motors folding its operations going out, right? And then we have seen uh, uh, Ford uh, you know, uh, folding its operation going out. And then Pepsi itself, you know, had you know re-entry kind of thing. So when you look at all this, right, so... You know, for them, and uh, is it that, that, you know, whether it's a uh, Harley Davidson or General Motors or Ford for that matter, I'm sure they would have uh, done their own, uh, you know, uh, analysis before entering India and setting up these operations here. But the point is that, is it that they have failed to uh, grow uh, as you define, or is it that they have not uh, touched base with uh, the right, uh, you know, pillars as far well as their growth in India is concerned, Anupama? So I would not like to comment on any of the companies in particular. But uh, there are different strategies for different companies. Some things work, some things don't work. So uh, it is very important to be flexible also. So maybe what is important is the end vision that, yes, India is the market that they want to be. India is not the easiest market to be in. Uh, we are a very diverse country uh, with very diverse customer base where language changes every few kilometers, where... Uh, Customs change every few hundred kilometers. So with that diverse a country, so many companies come wearing just one hat. Yes. So how do you connect with different people across in different ways is very important to grow in this country. Uh, establishing connect with the customer is one. And then having a very strong back end is equally important because if you are just getting... Um, your goods from somewhere else in the world and selling it here 
then you are not here for long to sell. Because only if you manufacture here, manufacture it in the right conditions, manufacture it in the right prices, can you sustain your growth in this country for a longer time? Thank you. I think uh, with your permission, I'm just taking one more question. This is from Pooja Nanda. Her question is, how to build growth strategies for b 2 and digital supply chains? Thank you, Pooja. Uh, sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? How to build growth strategies for b 2 and digital supply chains? Uh, digital supply chain, chains growth strategy is, uh, you know, you do what you can do best. And then there is ONDC network. <laughs> where you come and you grow everything. So the next uh, thing that ONDC is uh, working on is on financial services. So imagine uh, having, uh, so imagine a situation. Okay. So Pooja, you are, uh, I don't know where, where you are staying. Say you are staying in uh, Gurgaon, like I stay in Gurgaon and you want, you have a new job in Mumbai. So you have to go to Mumbai. You have to buy a ticket for yourself. You have to buy a service, uh, you have to rent a service apartment for yourself. Maybe the service apartment does not have a washing machine, but you don't have the cash. So you need loan for that washing machine and you want to buy a washing machine. And uh, you want to do some grocery shopping as you, you would be arriving Mumbai for the very first time. So if you log on to any of uh, the buyer apps on ONDC network, you go there. And you're able to buy your ticket. You're able to get the service apartment. You're able to get financial service loan. Uh, and you're able to buy your washing machine and your grocery. If you're able to do all of this at one go, then you have been, you have reached. So what you have to do is what you specialize at. You should only focus on that. So for any strategy, you cannot be all over the place. Otherwise, you again land up being Alice in Wonderland. So focus on your strength. If you're good at delivery, focus on delivery. If you're good at growing mangoes and selling them, do that. If you're good at making saris, working with weavers, do that. So whatever you're go good at doing that, do that. Come on to the network and you will grow. Thank you so much. I think you got it, uh, Pooja. And uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Anupama. And uh, sorry, you know, we have overshot the time, but it's an absolute pleasure to having, uh, um, you know, you for this evening. And uh, once again, you know, sorry to bother you on uh, Saturday evening, but absolute pleasure with this very insightful thing, you know, that the way you connected the dots in terms from your own experience about, uh, you know, all these four companies, um, you know, how they have grown. And the best part is definitely, you know, like you rightly said, uh, in fact, you, uh, you know, touch base this one you know, multiple times. That is uh, the heart and mind, the connection between, uh, you know, those two. And I'm sure, you know, that must have resonated very well with all of our participants and they will have a lot of actionable insights because each one of them are a business leader themselves. I'm sure they will take it uh, to their, uh, you know, their workplaces or, uh, you know, their companies. Thank you once again, Anupama, for, uh, for your time uh, and then great uh, insights, I would say. Thank you for having me over. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Anupama. Thank you so much.